anchors up, sails at full. Welcome to the Sloopcaster. Ding today, Kyle. Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, it's a big game coming up. Big game coming up. This is a big one, right? Is it? Yeah, I, I guess you can say so, right? Yeah. Our uh, our uh, not rivals. Yeah, uh, yeah. It not not our rivals. Hashtag not our rivals for sure. But like, who is Penn State, and should we be concerned? Huh? It's almost like it's the thesis of this episode. I'm a professional. No, you're an giving enemy. giving a thesis statement right off the top, asking a question, drawing in the audience. Answering my own question. And then Austin magically shows up out of nowhere. All right, Kyle. <laughs> what what time is it? What time is it, Kyle? Can we get the abstract? No. It is time, Jared, to know our enemy, Penn State. Penn State 6-1 and one coming into this game with their loss coming. Uh, was it their last game? No, no, because they they played Minnesota. The uh, yeah, they they played Minnesota week, uh, last week. Their their their, their loan loss coming a couple of weekends ago to uh, Michigan, who where they uh they got slaughtered. Yeah, and then they turned around. They slaughtered Minnesota. Um, and if if you listen to our Tuesday episode where we we talked about this game briefly, uh, you, you would know that this was a a hobbled Minnesota. This was Minnesota without um tanner morgan um kyle don't uh yeah don't silence the phone i don't know what that means uh the nittany lions roll into the season with one loss um they they were a top 10 team until michigan embarrassed them um they were we, yeah but but so so it's so a a solid team I uh, we'll just we'll give I'll, I'll give i'll give some credit up front here and then we'll dissect what a sect uh, Penn State here, but overall, it, it, an okay team. It's a, it's an okay team. They they're 49th in the country on offense. Defense not the not the same type of defense we're used to seeing Penn State. They've definitely been struggling. The the game against Michigan uh, really really hurt them in the statistics for defense. Currently, they are 63rd in the nation on uh, total defense. And yeah, they, and it really starts up front with that Penn state defense. They just been struggling to get pressure, to get in the backfield, to disrupt quarterback, to disrupt the running game. And that's, that's one of their biggest weaknesses here. And will Ohio state uh, expose that we'll, we'll see, we'll see, but that that's, that's one of the concerns with us, with a lot of Ohio state fans uh, from last weekend was can can Ohio State run the ball now? We we saw them struggling against a good a very good defense last weekend. Can they get the running game going this weekend? No, 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 Buckeye Matt. It is not a rivalry week. Penn State is not our rival. We have one rival. Okay, yeah. It, it when it comes to when it comes to Penn State, as Kyle said, there's been um, some issues. Some issues with the run defense. Michigan definitely uh, ripped them apart in on, on the ground. It was it was a tough game. And by if you're if you're a Penn State fan, that is, um, or if you're an Ohio State fan that was sitting there, you know, pulling for Penn State because fuck Michigan. <laughs> Kyle, you don't have to hold in the laugh. <laughs> Why are you over there holding in the laugh? Um, I'm smiling. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I wasn't trying to interrupt you, Jared. Wasn't inter trying to interrupt. But yeah, 55 rushes, 418 yards. Gangland says Penn State didn't actually play that badly. Um, beg to differ. Uh, I, I think Michigan. Let me, let me, let me, Michigan let me dominated. 55 rushes. 418 yards. Yeah. I mean, and, and like, go, if you watch that, I watched that game. I uh, like the first half, like religiously, like I was very, it's, it was a highest, it was Ohio States, two of their next three opponents. 
not next. I didn't mean to say that. Um, remaining, and anyway, two, two, two of their remaining opponents, they were playing each other, uh, arguably the two best opponents still on the schedule. Um, so yeah, I watched that game real closely. And one of the things I walked away from, and in fact, I actually sent this during halftime. I sent this during halftime of the Ohio State-Iowa game. And I go, hey, this game reminds me a lot of Penn State and Michigan. Because if you watch that game, it was actually kind of close at halftime. It was a little bit close at halftime, but if you were actually watching the game, you know Michigan was dominating it. They had to settle for some field goals. It was a lot of the same stuff we saw with, with Ohio State and Iowa, right? You beg to differ. Mm -hmm. Well, beg all you want. I watched, I, I, I watched the first half of that game thinking Michigan's a way better football team. Yeah. Penn State actually well, well, played well, good defense. Y yeah, for the first half, it they played good defense in the red zone. Penn State played really good defense in the red zone, uh, but they let Michigan get to that red zone real easily. 7.6 yards per carry. Woof. <laughs> yeah. Woof indeed. But yeah, all right. Um, all right, Penn State. Um, Sean Clifford entering his uh, eighth year at Penn State here. Uh, still the quarterback somehow. Uh, <laughs> having an okay season. I mean, not the greatest, not the worst, but it's okay. Uh, he's... 61% completion, 13 touchdowns, three interceptions for the year, and has uh, four touchdowns on the ground as well. And I know average we've mentioned it. I think we've average per attempt, 7.7. 7. That's, that's what the average per attempt is my favorite quarterback stat. I'm just tossing that out there. Um, and we've mentioned this a couple of times, and especially in the in our social screening when we're watching Penn State. Um, a uh, few for a few weekends this season so far they need to get their they need they are starting the wrong quarterback they should be starting <laughs> they should they should be starting their uh their freshman from medina ohio yeah i, th I think he 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 looks like medina or medina traditional... medina it, it, okay <laughs> don't don't question me jared uh <laughs> <laughs> He, he he looks like your traditional Penn State in the pocket passer. I I I, I he's the future for Penn State. And I imagine if Hackenberg was good. Yeah. I was one step ahead of you there, Zach. All right. Uh so Sean Clifford, um they have two two um okay quarter or two okay running backs nicholas singleton and uh katrin allen those are the ones who are splitting carries it's almost dead even 82 carries 78 carries um yeah it's i i'm not worried with either one of these but i've i've been impressed with both of them both of them are i think true freshmen i think both of them are true freshmen here um maybe one's a second year freshman but still very young running backs, but I really like what I've seen from Singleton and a uh, few of the games I've watched him. Though I, I think he could be something special if he if he's um if he keeps at it. Yeah, uh, I, I think these are both uh, talented running backs for sure. I they struggle. I, I think that they're even. I think they're better running backs than the stats show. To be honest with you. Um, if you remember Ohio State under JT Barrett, uh, especially like JT Barrett's senior year, and it kind of became obvious that JT Barrett really couldn't get it like downfield effectively. And therefore, Ohio State couldn't run the ball because everyone was up near the line of scrimmage because Ohio State was not throwing the ball deep with any sort of effectiveness. It's kind of what you're seeing here. Um, I think Allen and Singleton are both very good running backs. I'm very impressed by them, but uh, 
I don't think their offensive line is is anything special. Um, and because of Clifford's limited arm talent, it allows other offenses to sort of focus in on the running game. Uh, we missed two deep posts for touchdowns in the first half against Iowa. Huh? Was was that was that meant to be a he? Um, did you say Hackenberg was good? No, I said, I said Alar. Uh, I said of Alar. Imagine Hackenberg, but good. I thought I and heard the, you it, talking about our game. Yeah, sober up, buddy, or or don't. I don't care. I'm not your dad. Um. <laughs> Other uh, their receivers though, Jared. Oh, okay. I kind kind of like their running backs. I I think their receive their receivers are they're okay. I wouldn't say anything anything special as well. Um, they do have a um, they I think uh, Parker Washington and Mitchell Tinsley are their two main receivers. Thirty catches, twenty eight catches uh, for each of them. Of course, it's it's. Penn State, so they're going to have a tight end as well that they throw to. Uh, Britton uh, Strange is their main tight end who ties the team with um, four touchdowns for the season. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't, I don't have a lot to say about the wide receivers because most of the time when I'm watching Penn State, I'm too like, I, 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 I really dislike, not as a person. I'm sure he's a fine person. But my God, is Penn State totally and utterly limited by Sean Clifford? Yep. Uh, they're just very limited with him at quarterback. Um, I, yeah, I think yeah. Washington's a, a fine receiver, but I, I just honestly don't know about their receivers because, again, their passing game is just very limited. They are there are on offense, Jared, converting third downs. 35% of the time. That's not good. That's that's not good, Jared. It is. It is not good. Um, in fact, overall, hold on. It is 91st in the country. 91st. Let's let's look at some of those. Let's look at some of these stats. Okay. Let's look at some right. of these stats. Um points per game. Here. They are number 28 in the country. Uh, with 33 and a half points per game. Now you might look at that and say, Hey, not too bad. <laughs> um, yeah. Pro problem is they only score 17 against Northwestern. They only score 17 against, against Michigan. Um, and in prior, those were the two games on their schedule that, were most recent up until Minnesota and they scored good points against Minnesota. So we have to give them credit for that. They put up a bunch of points on Auburn. Auburn's terrible this year, but it's, you know, it's, it's not like playing Ohio, which is who they played in week two uh, and, and also scored like 40 plus points on. Uh, so with the, with their offense, it seems to be pretty feast or famine there. You know, it's, 35, 46, 41, 33, 45. But in their two losses, it's 17 each. Or, yeah, or excuse me, not their two losses. Their one loss to Michigan and what felt like a loss. Listen, beating this year's Northwestern team 17 to 7 is a loss. <laughs> I, what's more embarrassing? In, in all honesty, what is more embarrassing? Losing to Michigan seventeen to forty one or beating Northwestern seventeen to seven. Uh letting Iowa score seventeen. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Who are you? All right. Um switching gears here. Let's let's talk about their defense here, Jared. I think overall their defense is it's not not up to par of what we're used to seeing Penn State here as I mentioned earlier they struggle getting to the quarterback they struggle with their um 
getting in the backfield, getting pressures with sacks too. So you look at you look at their numbers, and it's not not up to par of what we're used to seeing in um, Penn State of previous years as well. Uh, yeah. They um, do- well, I'll say this: points per game. And again, we kind of talked about some of the teams they've played and but points per game, number 14 in the country, allowing just under 19 points yards per game. They're like 50th in the country, 373 yards a game. Um, And these are defensive stats, by the way. I I think I already made that clear, but then I got paranoid. Um, Kyle pointed out that they're only converting on third down 35 percent of the time. The inverse to that is they are only allowing their opponents to uh, convert third down 35% of the time under that, actually more like 34. Um, It's, uh, it's, you know, Kyle points out that it's, it's not a, not, not a great run defense by any means. Um, They are allowing 4.2 yards per carry, which makes them 70th in the country Um, yards per game. uh, 142, which places them 58th in the country. No, but they're passing stats, Kyle. Eh, They're they're passing. I mean, their passing stats is okay here as well. Where, Where do I have here? They, they're letting up 232 yards in the air, which is, it's, it's fine. I, I didn't see where, where that 61, at, but I, yeah, it's okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's okay. It's okay. Right. <laughs> um, so players to watch out for on Penn State's defense. Uh, when you talk about their defense, I think their playmaker. Hold on. Uh, Austin a, says they have two elite defensive backs. And by yeah, the way, mention, a, a third who's real right good, now. too. A third who's real good, too. Mention one right now, uh, Jair Brown, who, who's their, who's their, pretty much their leader on the defense there. He's a team's in tackles, uh, near the top in tackle for losses, has three interceptions for the year. Definitely a playmaker in uh, Jair Brown. Not our Jair Brown, their Jair Brown. Speaking of another one of their great, uh, another one of their great cornerbacks, also has a very familiar name. Anyone? 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 Uh, Joey Porter. No, no, no. A famous, a famous Buckeye name. A famous Buckeye name. Brutus. <laughs> Brutus, Jared. <laughs> Who it is? Oh, one Mr. Johnny Dixon. Yes. Johnny Dixon. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Dixon, uh, very good cornerback. Joey Porter Jr., elite cornerback. Jair Brown, uh, one of the best safeties in the country. Um, as Kyle pointed out, leads the team in solo tackles, leads the team in tackles, um, has he leads the team in interceptions. <laughs> but if if we look at if we, if we look at their passing statistics on defense, see a bit of a see a bit of a change where they're struggling on their rushing stats. On defense, their passing defense is is pretty amazing. Um, oppo- opponent completion percentage. They're only allowing half of the only allowing half of the passes attempted against them to be completed. Fifty percent, uh, which places them third in the country. Um, opponents yards per pass. They're only allowing six yards per pass. Ninth in the country. Uh, yards per game. This one goes up a bit. Um, 231, which puts them at 61st in the country. Which uh, m- makes sense. Which makes sense when you consider that teams have uh, apparently just thrown a lot against the Penn State defense 
which might be isn't Stroud 70% though. Yeah, he is. There's Penn State's only allowing 50%. Stroud's currently throwing at about 70%. One of the weird things I do see about these stats, uh, looking at this, Kyle, is that teams have predominantly thrown against Penn State. And I look at these stats and I have to wonder why. I mean, they had gotten up early in a bunch of games. Um, for sure, but teams have an inordinate number of pass attempts against Penn State versus run attempts versus Penn State. And but their their pass defense appears to be significantly, and I mean significantly better. And again, they have three amazing defensive backs, so it it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, completely agree, Jared. Uh, so, some other some some other players to look look out here for a uh, pair of linebackers, uh, Curtis Jacobs and Abdul Carter. Um, I think they both um, are second and third in team in total tackles. Uh, each of them have a, a sack, three and a half tackles for loss here. No, I'm reading. I'm reading what you guys are saying, Nomad. <laughs> I'm reading the chat here. Um, the, okay, like. And I think with a lot of a lot of the other players that I've seen here at Penn State, they are okay. N nothing, nothing stellar. Nothing, nothing that I'm overly worried about. Of uh, if Ohio State's going to struggle offensively here, I it, they have some play playmakers on defense, but nothing that I think it's be like. No, you got to stay away from this side of the of the field, away from him. I don't think I see anybody like that. I don't except, know. Except, except for. Except for except maybe Jair Brown though I, I'll get I'll give that one except maybe for Jair Brown and Joey Porter and and and, and Johnny Dix like I, I really like their secondary um I just I really like their secondary um but I mean again look look at how much the ball's been thrown against them and look at how little they're giving up as a you know in response to that um. But as Kyle pointed out, they are struggling to get to the quarterback. Um, there are only three players with. Hey, uh, we don't we don't have. Um, Sun cards not in the chat, guys. Would you count one and a half as multiple sacks? It is more than yes. one. So, yes, technically okay. it is. They they have they only have three players with multiple sacks. One of them uh, is a corner, the the aforementioned Johnny Dixon. And then one of them is a true freshman who isn't a starter on the team, gets rotation. Uh, uh, Dennis Sutton, well, I say Dennis Sutton. His name's not Dennis Sutton. It's Dennis Sutton. It's a hyphenated last name. Um, and then uh, Abdul Carter. No one else on the team has more than one sack. Yeah, that, that, that was something I'd noticed too. And what I mentioned issues with sacks, issues with um, tackling in the backfield, being that disruptive. Uh, they can, can continue protecting the protecting CJ Stroud and getting good pushes off the snap. How is going to have their way offensively against this uh, Penn State defense here? We shouldn't tout sack numbers, to be honest. I would say fair point, but again, having watched a fair number of Penn State games this year, it's not it's not like what you see with with Ohio State, where there are, you know, a thousand bodies around the quarterback at all times and they're just getting rid of it. Um, it's it's not that. Yeah. All right. Let's let's get into some um into some uh, our our picks here, Jared. You ready for it? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, this weekend's pick, um, maybe we, we may know him, Jared. We, we may maybe. know him a little bit. The, the, the audience might know him. Yeah, his uh, 
He goes by uh, Austin Formation. Yeah, he he he's a jerk. Exactly. Also, Austin Formation, <laughs> aka Austin Graham, aka just Austin, uh, aka uh, Caw Boo Toes. Toe. All right, so he's ducks. He's our guest. He's our guest picker for this week. So let's let's jump right into it with our first question, with our first pick here. Ohio State player to watch, Jared. Gangland the says player, the who, cutest who's, who's host. The that, how you should watch out for Ohio State. Gangland says the cutest host that has been on the podcast. Don't you defame Tony Gerdeman like that? Jeez. Mm-mm. Yeah, that he he set he set the bar real high for us. Uh, yeah, uh, Ohio State player to watch. The most interesting battle in this game by far, if we're going strength on strength, is going to be Ohio State's wide receivers versus the defensive backs of Penn State. Um, you have. I feel like we just kind of mentioned a legal term, and then Buckeye Esquire showed up weird um (laughs) uh so you're gonna have you're gonna have like johnny dixon and joey porter i assume um primarily on on uh marvin harrison and julian fleming would be my assumptions so to me and and again if we're looking out of the slot and you know we're maybe not totally counting one way or the other um if we're gonna see jsn return so I'm gonna look at Emeka Buka coming out of the slot. Probably will get a lot of drag patterns and other sort of man busting routes. One of the things you can say about this Penn State defense is they are very fond of going man on man. It's a man to man defense. Um, looking for Abuka to come out of the slot. Yeah, I slot. Uh, the, so yeah, a Mecca book, I think will be it, it, like, if you looked at the Utah game and you saw the role that JSN played in that game, just sort of ripping things up underneath again, running those drag patterns, um, running those man busting routes. I, I think maybe that's the role we see a Mecca book play in this game. I, I expect this to be a very, a book, heavy game. Yeah. So my player to watch here, but I'm going, I'm going, I'm going out of left field here. I don't think anybody, any one of us has has picked him here, but he's been playing really well recently. He's had back to back games of a of a turnover here. I'm going with Le- with uh, Lathan Ransom as my player to watch for Ohio State here. I, I think I think def- offensively, not worried, not worried of um of Ohio state being able to not worry about, I can't talk Jared, not worried about Ohio state's offense, not being able to move the ball against Penn state, but need to just make, keep Penn state in check here. And I think ransom is due for another, another really good game. He came off of a eight tackle game with a uh, fumble recovery. And he also had an interception against Sparty the week, um, the game before that. Maybe we see see a third game in a row with a turnover for Ransom. So I'm going to stick with the Ransom for my player to watch for Ohio State. And who does Austin pick? Uh, let me look, because I don't actually look at these. So I'm going to scroll. And he says here, <laughs> he goes with another safety. He goes with another safety. He has Tanner McAllister. Uh, he <laughs> And and rightfully so. Uh, he says here he had a huge two pick game last week, and I think being the most familiar with Noel's scheme could prove to be beneficial in a week where we play the most important game so far on the season. If Noel's is looking to do some exotic looks, I think there's a chance Tanner is put into a role to make some more plays. Yeah, it's a good good pick there. Good pick. All right, Kyle, enemy player to watch. Uh, who is your enemy player to watch? Uh, I see you have a name already, so I will uh, I will pick a uh, a different name because that's that's who I was going to pick here. And I think um, it's the obvious name because I while you were reading that one, I was peeking at Austin, and it's 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 also it's also that name. <laughs> 
So why don't you just say yours, Jared? Why don't you say yours then? All right. I'll, I'll say mine, Jair Brown. Um, and I'll, instead of giving my own explanation, because I think I was already talking about this show, I'll just go ahead and skip right to Austin's. Uh, he's, uh, Austin says, going with two safeties for my players to watch. I doubt Brown will be the only deep safety because going one high against Ohio State could be a death sentence. But at the same time, uh, I think there's a shot. Uh, Penn State sells out to stop the run and puts Porter Jr. on an island. If that happens, Brown needs to be in position to help break up big plays if he is or the boundary corner get beaten. Um, if Brown helps shut down Ohio State's passing attack, that's the only way Penn State has a shot to win this game. All right, fair enough. And I think my my player to watch is this this player has to show up, has to have an enormous game in order for them to even have a shot for Penn State to win. And that's it's got to be Sean Clifford. It's got to be Sean Clifford if he ha he has to be on point and if he if he has a, an okay game not even close. He has to have one of those games where he starts to where he starts to just make plays, he makes throws and and we've seen and we've seen it in the past too where he's he makes things interesting. It's like, oh great, oh now 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 Clifford is actually playing well this week and he finally is. Could it be this weekend here? It's going to have to be if they want a shot at winning here. We used to call it the Bo Nix one good game, but Bo Nix actually kind of looked competent this year in a new program. So it might be the Sean Clifford one good game. Mm, it could be. All right. And a uh, key matchup, key matchup for this game. Uh, I got to, I got, I got to say our safeties versus, um, versus Sean Clifford here. You got to, got to make sure that Sean Clifford doesn't outsmart you, doesn't make those key throws there so i think it's it's got to come down to ransom and tanner and gang to um to make sure that keeping clifford in check here nomad says stop overselling not our rival here i was in the back of my head thinking i was taking the game too lightly <laughs> yeah i i thought i was going in the, i thought i was erring in the other direction nomad where i might be a little too you are, to be honest. We'll see, but that's what I was thinking. I, I was sitting here thinking, am I, am, I, am I treating this too lightly? Is Penn State a bigger threat than I'm saying? And then the line at 15 is a joke. Well, before, before we get to I that, agree. Jared, what's your, what, what's your key matchup? Um, my key matchup I have as uh, Johnny Dixon. And Joey Porter versus Marv and Emeka Abuka and Julian Fleming. And let's just throw Jaya Brown while we're at it, too. All of them. And maybe, Jay, and maybe Jason, if if we see him uh, to an extent. I, you know, maybe. Uh, yeah. Let's hope. Let's hope. So here's a, here's a question that... Uh, Penn State has covered that, that, against Ohio State in six of the last eight games. I don't care. <laughs> um, well, here here's a question, too, because he's... He makes plays on his feet here. Do does Ohio State need to spy on Clifford? He he does tend to get happy feet um, at times too. Yeah, I so, mean, sure, and he does run I'm, a lot. But I'm, I'm not, not. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about it this year because of how 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 Knowles has set up his defense. I'm not I'm not worried about it. Yeah, you know, he, maybe he'll get three, four yards here once in a while, but I don't think he's going to really break one unless there's just an absolute breakdown on that defense. I'm, I don't expect I'm not worried about one. it this this year. All right, let's see what Nomad has here. He says uh, his key matchup is Marvin Harrison and Joey Porter. Uh, Porter might be one of the best corners in all um, of college football. If not, you said, he's damn close. And Kyle, definitely. Uh, you said Nomad. I said Austin. Nomad. Sorry. Austin. Love you, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, where was that? Uh, Joey Porter. Um, 
Um, if not one of the best corners, he's damn close and definitely up there high on that list. On the opposite note, Marv might be the best receiver in the country. He could be on his way uh, to the uh, uh, to thank you, Jared Award. Uh, something no one would have guessed at the beginning of the season due to JSN. But with JSN out, Marv has been outstanding, and the winner of this matchup will have a huge effect on which team will come out victorious. Porter Jr. will likely be asked to cover Marv the whole game, and if Marv can clip him, I think he will a few times. Our Buckeyes will be in good shape. All right, Kyle. All right. And, um, and, our, and our last one here is the spread pick. Ohio State, as we locked it in, and I think are we even still right now, 15 and a half points is the spread. Not enough. I agree. Not enough. Over, not guys. enough. We're, over you're, is not, we, we're not talking, a, guys, we're not even talking about the over under. Way, way over. Over doesn't mean anything in this context, Nomad. I think the over under is at like 60, 61, 62. I would also take that over, by the way. Um Austin, this is Austin, you can you can stop it with um with me not being a Buckeye fan and all that here because I'm I'm taking the over. I'm taking the over here. I don't just got done saying that we I don't think I don't think, over. I don't think you're uh, picking Ohio State. Going to, it's not the over. We're not talking about the over under. You're picking Ohio State to cover. Why does everyone in the server do this? Because we love you, Jared. You, you do it just to fuck with me. Yes. Well, yes. Are you new here, Jared? Are you new here? <laughs> Fine. I got Ohio State to cover, Jared. I got Ohio State to cover, not just cover, but cover easily here. I have the final score. Where where did I have my notes here? I have the final score, Ohio State 50. 55 Penn State 20. I have Ohio State uh winning this game 52 to 17. Nice. 52 to 17. Kyle, nice. what does uh what does Austin think is gonna go down? All right, Austin says here, not Nomad, but Austin uh says, I like Ohio State in this game. I really do. I think in the trenches, Ohio State is actually much better than a Penn State, which you couldn't say in, in some previous years. The talent level is a little bit more comparable in the secondary, and Penn State has some nice running backs and some decent receivers as well. I think this game will actually be a little bit more of a low-scoring side with both defenses making plays to start with. Eventually, it will grow to a higher-scoring game near the end, Remaining close throughout 15 and a half is a tough number. And I would definitely pick Ohio state. If it were 13 and a half, those extra two points make it risky backdoor cover Ohio state for life. Give me the Buckeyes. Yeah. It's Ohio state winning 45 to 24. I feel like you spent a lot of time there. Like, yes, nice. Um, a lot of time there, uh, basically saying, that, like this is going to be kind of close and then you were just like still with a runaway at the end yep. all right so with that all until being late said, said here we're, we're going to go into uh some more austin here austin's over unders uh for this game here so we're going to start with his first one uh cj stroud completion percentage at 65 Point four nine percent. Give me the over. Give me the over. I think I think CJ's uh, going to be able to complete the passes um, like just with ease, like he's done all season here. Uh, definitely, definitely a little concerned about the interceptions he's been throwing recently, but not enough to scare me. So I'm going to take the over in this one. Yes, no, no, we are now doing over and unders. 
CJ throws at like 70% so far this year. And Penn State is allowing only like 50% to, to, to complete. I Penn State's better. Penn State is a better defense than simply lowering CJ's average by five points. So he's uh, only ever. I'm I'm only, gonna go. I'm gonna go under on this number. Under. He's he's only thrown under sixty five percent twice this year. I that's fine. I'm okay. Like I don't, he's not played a better group of, it's, it's, he's not called, played a called, better secondary this year. No, you guys call me a, a Ohio state hater. Well, you can now call Jared a CJ Stroud hater here. No, I'm just being factual. Right. I'm just being factual. All right, Marvin Harrison. This is, I'm gonna say, I want to say this again. This is the best secondary that Ohio state have or will face this year. They have three elite NFL talents in this secondary. All right. Uh, next one here is Marvin Harrison receptions at five and a half. Taking the over this one. Sorry. Taking the by Marvin Harrison. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over. But it just, it's, Emeka, yeah, Emeka is the volume guy, and I think that might even be exaggerated this year. Um, yeah, his, pa his past two games here, seven against Iowa and seven against Sparty. See, because I was going to say under, but then it was like, I remembered he got a lot last week against another, like, quality defense, right? So... Will they throw more volume at him because the offense or excuse me, the defense they're playing is very good. Um, the DBs are better. Yes. Which. But the DBs were also not not as good as as Iowa's DBs aren't as good as Penn State's, but still some of the better defensive backs they've played so far this year. Um so Stover, five receptions. Yeah, I'm just wondering. It's it's always hard to tell. You know, I'm actually I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna go under. Um I'm gonna go under. So he's also a Marvin Harrison Jr. hater. No, I'm an Emeka fan. I think most of the volume is going to Emeka this game on the underneath stuff. All right. Uh Penn State defensive sacks at one and a half. Question for you, Jared. Question yeah. for you about this one here. Uh, how many, how many sacks has CJ Stroud had? What, what, what's the most times that has, or what's the most CJ Stroud has been sacked in a game this season? Mm -hmm. What's the most th that he's been sacked in a game? Three times. At, in one game, in one game. In one game, how many times has he bet? What's the most he's been sacked? Two. One. Okay. He's never been sacked more than once in a game this year, and it's going to remain the same. Yep. He's been sacked five times. All year. Interesting. Good stat. Good stat. Um. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm the under. Yeah, and I and I don't as as much as I have a lot of good things to say about the defensive backs that the Penn State has, they've not produced many sacks this year. Yep. All right. And uh singleton carries at 12 and a half. Over Ooh. or under, under, under. I'm gonna say under. They're gonna have to pass more. They're gonna have to pass in order for them to stay in the game. So his his carries are going to be limited. And since they split carries, I'm going to say under. Yeah. It's like, I think they're going to have to throw like, everything. Kyle, I don't know. Kyle said it. Kyle said it. I don't know. It is not, I have nothing to add. Marco, Marco punts at four and a half. 
Mirko punts four and a half. Ooh. How many did he have? How many did he have last un, under? Um, I, I if I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a comparison here between Ohio State and and Michigan, uh, not because I think Michigan's on par with Ohio State, but because I think that's the most apt comparison talent wise that Penn State has played so far. Um, Penn State did not force a lot of punts, but they did force a lot of field goals. Past past five games for Murko in punts. Past five games. Three, three, two, two, one. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm what well, yeah, and I'm just saying I don't think if again, if we look at the Michigan game as a comparison, what you could see in this game depending upon the success level of Ohio State's passing game, you could see something similar to what we saw last week in, in, in the Iowa game. Ohio State marches down the field. They get in or near the red zone. And then, you know, run out of downs, kick a field goal. You, yeah. you could see that. You could see more of that like we saw that with the uh, against Iowa uh, with this defense. Um, but I don't think this defense is so good. In fact, they're not as good of a defense as Iowa. You're not going to see them totally stifle Ohio State's offense. Force some red zone field goal attempts? Sure. Force a bunch of punts? No. If Iowa couldn't do that, then Penn State's not going to. Yep. All right. Uh, Stover. Cade Stover yards, total yards at 44 and a half. He hasn't had he hasn't had many yards at, um, since the turn of the turn of the calendar here of the month. Yeah, he hasn't had many yards. He's had, how many times so has the, he gone over forty four yards? Uh, this month so far, none. N no total this year. This year, uh, over forty four twice. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go under. Austin says, okay, I feel like this could be a big Stover game. It could be. It could be. It could be. I'm still going to go under, though. Yep. I am as well. And last over under he has here. Total tackles by by, by a Chambers and Ransom. I had to pause myself for a second there, Jared. Chambers and Ransom. Nine and a half tackles. I'm going to go with over here. I, I, I think uh, Ransom is going to continue to his uh his how well he's been playing these past couple of games and i think he's going to have another great game here so i'm going to go with over only average seven a game as a duo which you found odd um yeah um chambers has spent more time in the secondary uh compared to chambers Compared to what we've seen, you know, with like Eichenberg, right? So I think Eichenberg's been getting a little bit more tackles for that reason. Um, and then I don't feel like Ohio State safeties are necessarily getting a ton of tackles as a whole. It's one of the things uh, when we started the season and Austin, I believe you gave me a, um, I believe you you said an over under for the preseason where you were specifically asking about us. Uh, I don't, I don't remember if it was a specific safety or if it were, if it was all the safeties, I, I forget, but it was just like number of tackles. And I'm like under, I don't think the safeties are going to get the same level of same level of uh, tackle work this year, which is what you want. You want the linebackers and the defensive linemen making more of the tackles. You don't want the safeties making more of the tackles. And, you know, thankfully that that has come true. Uh, we, we have seen more of those tackles move away from our safeties and to the linebackers and to the defensive line. So I, I don't necessarily find it odd that Ransom isn't getting a ton of tackles is, is my point, or any of the safeties are getting a ton of tackles, especially compared to last year. Um, so I'm going to go under on this. Gotcha. 
All right. Um, and that is it for the over unders. Uh, and that that is that is it for our Know Your Enemy episode here, uh, Penn State edition. Got anything else before we wrap it up, Jared? No. Um I, I do I feel very good that Ohio State wins this game. Um see you know, Matt. I feel very good that Ohio State wins this game. Um but I'm gonna say this because I thought I made this pretty clear last week while I am very confident that Ohio state wins this game, that does not mean it's going to look pretty. I want to reemphasize one more time. These are the best of, you know, Iowa best overall defense. Ohio state's going to play this year. And unless Ohio state plays Georgia, but these are the best defensive backs, you know, specifically defensive backs at Ohio state will play this year, period. I, I don't care who they pick up in the in the playoffs. These are the best defensive backs Ohio State will play this year, period. Um, so don't don't get all up in your feelings, everyone. Please don't get all up in your feelings when CJ Stroud isn't 15 for 15 with three touchdowns to start the game, because it's not gonna happen. You, you, there's going to be a couple punts and there's going to be a couple field goals and there's going to be a couple missed passes. So will probably throw an interception this game. It's okay. Blasphemy, Jared. Why do you say something so controversial yet so brave? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just trying to, I'm trying to set expectations. People were seriously freaking out last week. Because Ohio State's offense didn't look perfect against one of the best defenses in the country. Like, chill. And I'm just letting you know, this is the best secondary. I believe Penn State's secondary is the best secondary in the country, period. It's not going to look pretty the entire game. Set your expectations accordingly. Don't freak out. Like I said, when CJ Stroud doesn't go 20 for 20 for 200 yards and four touchdowns in the first half, because he's not gonna, and that's okay. But I still feel very good that Ohio State, I feel very, very good that Ohio State wins this football game. Yep. Agreed. Oh, I know you're kidding gangland, but don't get me started. All right, Kyle, um, I want to encourage everyone to uh, sub by our Patreon. We're trying to get a, a trying to get some of those numbers up, trying to get some of our Patreon numbers up. So if you could, uh, you can join these uh, these hooligans. Kyle, can you point directly down for me? You can join these hooligans down there in the chat. They get to listen to us live for some they, they which they like for some reason. Um, they get early access to episodes. Um, they have a podcast feed that doesn't have those uh, annoying uh, ads that cut in in the middle, beginning and end. So they don't have to deal with those. Um, we have a private section of the Discord server where um, I talk a little more loosely <laughs> about certain things. Um, and by the way, if you're watching these this season, four hours of entertainment that, that you know, we're trying to provide to you a week, maybe, maybe $3 a month is a fair price to ask for four episodes a week. Um, which by the way, it actually is a, there's actually a fifth episode. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, there's, there's actually a, a fifth episode, uh, just for the Patreon supporters. And if you're wondering, Jared, how could you guys possibly talk more football outside of the, well, that, it's not a very football centric episode. Let me just be honest with you. <laughs> we lovingly ref refer to it as shenanigans. So there you go. Kyle, that's all the talking. The so oh, the social screens. Thank you, Austin. Um, is, is the evening game still running away with the vote? It looks like. And the mods have agreed we will have a World Cup social screen. I'm not against that. I'm all for that. 
Um, uh, but I, yeah, I think Jared, we'll be it is, doing. It is running away here. Our evening one, so be watching the Kentucky Tennessee and the um, little brother big brother matchup uh, Saturday night. Yeah, so we're we're gonna get here. We're gonna gather in this Discord server. We're gonna watch uh, those games, and if anything else interesting pops up, and hell, if one of the three thirty games is coming down to the wire, and maybe we're gonna get to see some chaos, we might start a little early yeah absolutely. we do this every saturday it's a lot of fun um and again you get by the way you can actually you you need to be a patron to talk during those games but literally everyone in the discord server which is free the discord server is free there are premium sections of the discord but the discord server itself is free discord.thesloopcast.com everyone can join the social screen and listen the paid people, the, 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 the Patreon supporters ha- can talk. And again, all of this for $3 a month and you can pay for 12 months up front if you want to and get, I think it's a 12% discount, 11 something like that. Uh, it, it becomes like 32 something. I forget exactly. But yeah, you can save money by doing the whole year up front. And it's only, I don't know, it's I've listen, I've I've had DoorDash orders less than $32. It's not that much money. Come on, guys. Help us out here. Um, Fiat's are bad cars. I'll take your word for it. I've never driven one. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I got a stat here, and I'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate for it, but I'm going to ask the question. When's the last time Ohio State played a noon game at Penn State? Last time Ohio State's played a noon game at Penn State. I don't know. 2001. When's the last time Ohio State won at Penn State being a noon game? Um, I don't know. 1995. Okay. How many, how many noon games happened in between there? Uh, 95, 99, and 01. So this is the fourth, this is only the fourth time this has been a noon game. I mean, when you say they haven't won at noon at Penn State since 1995, they've only had two opportunities since then. Three. Yeah. No, this will be the third. No, this is the fourth. They played in 95, 99. No, no, no. no. I said since then, since then. Since 95. So uh, okay. so no, you don't count 95. Um, okay. okay. What I find most interesting about that GIF, Zach, is that they blurred out the logo on his shirt. <laughs> who Who is that worried but about I'm, that? That's it, Jared. That is, that is all I have in my corner, though. Okay. <laughs> Leave... Team Kyle cherry pick stats alone. They they want me to let you just run crazy and not challenge any of your stats or, and or the validity of said stats. Kyle's got no response to that. Nothing. Nope. We're just going to end the episode. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the New Bomb Turks. New Bomb Turks punk band from the Columbus Eric. The, they were a campus band. They were an Ohio State band uh, back in the 90s. And um, that's that's it. I think that's everything for this show. Uh, make sure to tune in on Friday uh, for the Sloop Picks episode. We will be discussing Notre Dame, Syracuse, TCU, West Virginia, Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. Kentucky, Tennessee, and then uh, the Battle of the Brothers as well. And uh, that's it. So once again, tonight's ending music uh, will be the new Bomb Turks, punk band, Columbus, Ohio State, campus, early 90s, all that stuff. Uh, So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the new Bomb Turks. (laughs) 